The laws on defamation are designed to protect a person's reputation, but sometimes their application poses problems. In which ways can they be used in a manner that is damaging to freedom of expression? The problem is that laws that are made with good intentions can very easily be misused or used in a way that they infringe on civil liber liberties. And that's exactly the case with defamation laws. They are necessary. They, if you look into legal uh, history, they have always existed. The protection of the reputation, the honor of other people is uh, uh, protected by the convention. But they can be used in a way to suppress um, political, critical debate, especially if uh, they are linked with penal sanctions and used against the press and the journalists expressing critical statements on what's going on in the political scene. Why do you think that government ministers or politicians should be more tolerant of criticism? Well, they expose themselves to the public. They go into the light, so to speak, and they want to be elected. They want even to be loved by the public. And they want to convince that they are great and can assume responsibilities. And that's why they have to accept, they have to tolerate that people look at them and scrutinize what they do, scrutinize what they have done in the past. And that's why they have to accept criticism to a much larger degree than uh, normal people. Do you think that freedom of expression extends as far as attacks in written, spoken or even cartoon form when they concern religious, cultural or national sensitivities? Religion, culture, national identity are very much in the centre of public debate in an open society. So of course they form part expressions on these issues, form part of freedom of expression. And the form, like cartoons or exaggerated, other exaggerated forms, are protected. Uh, that's essential, I think, for whatever debate in a democratic society. But of course, there are always limits, especially if very sensitive questions are concerned. And generally, the court would talk about hate speech that is not allowed if uh, some uh, attitudes are criticized uh, on the basis of intolerance and just with the only aim to spread hatred. As far as Article 10 of the European Convention on Human Rights is concerned, what are the main issues that a judge has in mind when considering a case involving defamation? What counts is basically if a statement is true or if it's not true. I think it's self-evident that it uh, must be protected to tell the truth whereas it's, it's not necessary uh, always to protect something that is not true. And, but uh, the problem is that uh, value judgments are not, uh, cannot be assessed on the basis of uh, the question if they are true or if they are not true. If you say that somebody is beautiful or ugly, you cannot prove it. And so the judge has in a first step to decide if a statement is a statement on facts or if it's a statement, it's, it's a value judgment. And uh, furthermore, uh, the judge has to assess the context in which a statement was made, the victim, the one who made the statement, the general political context, and all that has to be assessed in order to balance if a prohibition uh, of a certain statement was necessary in a democratic society. What are the steps that someone who feels that they've been a victim of defamation can take other than mounting a legal challenge? For a politician it's quite easy to react directly to some accusation by defending himself or herself in the public arena by taking the microphone and answering to what he or she was reproached. Uh, whereas for a, um, a private individual it might be more difficult, he or she could ask a newspaper to publish uh, a rectification or could write a letter to the editor, but that all that might not be seen and might not be an efficient remedy, so in the end it might be necessary to go to court.